be speaking about Frankenstein. Is Frankenstein someone to be pitied? Is he weak? Or does he have super strength? Perhaps the most interesting thing to note is that this isn't Frankenstein. This is Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein. This is Frankenstein's creation, sometimes known as the monster or the creature. Mary Shelley started writing her first novel, Frankenstein, at the age of 18. She finished two years later and it was published in 1818. This video is going to focus on Dr. Frankenstein's creation as portrayed in films and television. It will not be focused on illustrations. The first film adaptation of Frankenstein was in 1910, a 20-minute silent film with Charles Ogle as the creature. Definitely a bad hair day. One of the most familiar and perhaps the most popular version of Frankenstein's monster is the 1931 Universal film with Boris Karloff as the creature. The movie spawned six films and four actors starred as the monster. Boris Karloff, Lon Chaney Jr., Bella Lugosi, and Glenn Strange. And now for a face-to-face -face comparison. One of the things I find fascinating is the mysterious birthmark that appears on two versions of the monster, Bella Lugosi and Glenn Strange. Boris Karloff, the first portrayer of the monster, had a partial denture that he removed for filming and makeup was applied to darken that side of his face to make him look more gaunt and skeletal-like. In the sequel to the first movie, the monster lost some hair and was visibly scarred due to burns from a fire. Assuming the monster had regenerative powers, his hair would have grown back and his burns healed. But how did we get to this? Bella Lugosi did not have a birthmark. Actor number three, Lon Chaney Jr., the birthmark is gone. And it returns with Glenn Strange. You may have noticed I said the original Frankenstein spawned six movies. It is actually seven if you count Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. And this is when the monster took a serious turn for comedy. And in the 1960s, the monster took a complete turn to comedy with the television show, The Munsters. According to Universal Studios and the show's writers, Herman Munster was another creation of Dr. Frankenstein. Herman Munster was portrayed by Fred Gwynn Look for yourself, but it is hard to find a scary looking Herman. He's seen as happy, sad, surprised, sometimes angry, but rarely evil or mean looking. As far as Universal was concerned, the monster had been tamed. It's hammer time. Hammer Film Productions is a British film production company based in London. Founded in 1934, the company is best known for a series of gothic horror films from the mid-1950s until the 1970s. Universal Studios trademarked the makeup for the Frankenstein monster, so in one sense it's comparing apples to oranges. One of the differences Hammer brought into the mix? Color. Now blood could flow red. While Universal Studios had the terrible trio, Karloff, Cheney, and Lugosi, Hammer Films had the dynamic, demonic duo, Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. In 1957, the Hammer struck with The Curse of Frankenstein and Christopher Lee playing the monster. Like the first Universal Frankenstein film, Hammer's Curse of Frankenstein generated six more movies. And like the Universal series, a lot of the continuity went out the proverbial window. Although Christopher Lee only played the monster once, he went on to bigger and better things. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of Hammer's monsters created by Dr. Frankenstein, although it must be noted with reboots and differing storylines, they were not all the same monsters. The number of films with an appearance of Frankenstein's monster is in the hundreds. This list is approximately half of the Wikipedia listings, A through H. So honestly, I can't go through them all here. I will look at a few notable B-movies and drive-in features of the creature. I Was a Teenage Frankenstein follows the doctor as he creates a killer monster from a disfigured automobile accident victim. Bitch and body, bad face. Sounds like every teen's angst over acne. I might get in trouble with YouTube if I cover this one too close. An army vet named Eddie lost his arms and legs to a landmine in Vietnam. Brilliant Dr. Stein finds a way to put Eddie back together again, but a jealous lab assistant messes with the experiment, and Eddie becomes a monster. When are these doctors going to learn? Hire better lab assistants. 
What if during World War II, Hitler, who is in possession of the Frankenstein monster's heart, arranges for the heart to go to Axis member Japan, who in turn experiments with it by putting it into a young boy, just as the atomic bomb in Hiroshima blows up and radiates the boy. Yep, Frankenstein grows up to a giant size and starts fighting with other Toho monsters. The original plans included a sequel where giant Frankenstein fought Godzilla, King of the Monsters. But deals were cut, substitutions made, and another fighter stepped in at the last minute. But that's another story. Oh, that's the most unheard of thing I ever heard of. Wait, there's more. Put this in your pipe and smoke it. Jesse James meets Frankenstein's daughter. Here is another chiseled and buff monster. And let's not forget Frankenstein and the space monster. Thanks for joining me in this exploration of Frankenstein. It's Rocktober and frankly, I don't give a stein. Choo-choo-choo-choo.